So I'm standing here at the recreated Fort William Henry at uh, present-day Lake George, New York, and right behind me is Lake George. Um, Lake George, um, I'm at the southern end of, of Lake George. Lake George um, had been first uh, European eyes on it were uh, some Jesuit missionaries who came to it at about the 1640s um, and this entire area from um, what became <clears throat> Montreal down through the Richelieu River to Lake Champlain to um, Lake George onto Albany and uh, to the Hudson River and uh, New York City and the Atlantic Ocean provided this north-south uh, key corridor to uh, European expansion and military operations um, through the 16 and 1700s. Um, in 1755, uh, William Johnson uh, was attacked here at what became known as the Battle of Lake George um, by uh, some French coming uh, from the north at Fort St. Frederick, Fort St. Frederick at uh, Crown Point, New York, uh, which I have also visited. Um, <clears throat> Johnson wins that battle, decides to establish a fort here, builds Fort William Henry, um, names it, uh, you know, in the, in the name of some British royalty, renames Lake George, Lake George, in honor of the King George of England. Um, this is what the, the French had previously called this lake, uh, uh, Lac de Sous-Sacrement. And um, from 1755 to 1757, uh, this is a sort of a key jumping off point, supply point, strong point for the British Empire and is about the northernmost uh, outpost of the British. In 1757, um, uh, French General Montcalm moves down the river here with um, thousands of troops and Indian allies, also along the western bank of the of the uh, of the lake. Uh, lays siege in August of 1757 to. Um, uh, um, uh, British General Monroe, who's now uh, the administrator of the fort. There's only about 2,000 men here. A couple days siege ends with the British capitulation. French take over the fort. The British leave and retreat back to Fort um, uh, Fort Edward, which is about 16 miles uh, to the south here. Um, that whole siege is in uh, James Fenimore Cooper's The Last of the Mohicans, although um, there's some modern scholarship around the, the supposed massacre and so on of the British troops. They're kind of bringing some of that into, uh, in, into question about whether or not that really was much of a massacre of the retreating British. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so I've, I've visited a lot of forts um, in a lot of parts of the country, um, a lot of historic sites, a lot of French and Indian War sites. This one um, was rebuilt in the, in the 1950s as a tourist attraction, and it retains a lot of its very kitschy, like mid 20th century touristy um, sort of. Uh, uh, trappings that you won't see in more modernly curated uh, uh, forts and museums um, of the period. Um, you've got like you know, tar paper roofs and um, a lot of uh, sort of old-fashioned um, like mannequin displays and uh, and uh, labels on artifacts. Um, so. As it, it's a little bit of an artifact at this point, um, you know, adjacent to a miniature golf course and those kinds of things that showed how um, Americans uh, understood their history in the mid 20th century. Um, so as an artifact of both the French and Indian War, as well as an artifact on how um, American tourists experienced history uh, in the mid 20th century, uh, Fort William Henry is, um, that kind of spot, um, but visiting the lake, uh, you really get, you know, again, what the sense of how important these waterways were to uh, uh, Indian, French, and British um, people vying for this part of the continent in the 16 and 1700s.